Hi and welcome to another episode. What we've got here is the Acorn Archimedes, the A3010. And what I want to do is upgrade the operating system, the RISC operating system. For those that don't know, the operating system is actually on a couple of chips inside this particular machine. Um, it's possible to mess around with EEPROMs and stuff and I've tried and I've used a fair few different EEPROMs of the correct style but it seems that this particular motherboard just isn't happy with using those ROMs because I know I'm burning the ROMs correctly because speaking to other people which have got it working um, so I don't know what I'm doing wrong or it's just that this particular machine doesn't like EEPROMs or the particular style of EEPROMs because even though it's 27 c 800s that I'm using or you know 100 F1s um, there seems to be different styles of those particular chips even though they come from the same maker um, and the ones I've been getting my hands on don't work so I splashed out and bought the actual ROMs um, a fair bit of cash for what they actually are I know they're kind of rare so yeah I'd give that one out down the pub with over a pint um, the thing is though is that the update that you get from these you can do from the hard drive you know some update files um, and that sorts it all out and everything but for those that follow my channel they'll know that I like it just to work I don't want to use update files I don't have this stuff I just want it if I can just turn it on and it works that's fine um, from a previous episode you'll know that I've actually upgraded this to 4 megabytes already so I'm used to getting in to the computer apart from this time around I'm really gonna have to show you how to take off the shielding and everything like that and then one other thing I want to do is the floppy disk ejector button some will know as well when I first opened it all up sadly it had broken off this, what's really happened is that there's a couple of tangs on the sides here and you press it so many times it snaps off um, I was wanting to mess around and see if I can 3D print something to fix this and I may well try again at some other point but at the moment what I've done is sent off for this and the only reason I've sent off for them is because I don't actually have any green filament for my 3D printer um, so I'm using this and it looks an awful lot stronger because it's a solid bit of plastic instead of the original where it was you know, hollow. So let's have a look and prove that the operating system on the Alchemedes itself at the moment is 3.10 so that's all nice and working you know everything else works fine but it's just the serial port as I say and really it's just that um, I think it doesn't go as fast as it's supposed to be going so let's turn it off get this all open get these installed fingers crossed it all works let's try again it's pretty easy to get into there's only three screws across the bottom and then you rotate it back over trying not to make everything else bang around of course the video cable seems to have got a bit tangled at the back here let's put that out of the way and then as I've shown in previous episodes lift up the front and then start pushing backwards ever so gently and then it will come away there we go put that out of the way and then we've got the keyboard we need to take off so there's two ribbon cables here very gentle with them of course no screws holding it down basically there's like four pegs sort of don't firmly hold it in place but there's definitely a tight rest let's say it that way so you've got to be careful with them lift and then slide it towards yourself so the ribbon cables come out of that little slit in the shielding here again gently put this out of the way and then we have one two three screws here so I'll jump cut for them as well okay that's the three screws taken out you can see I've already got the 4 meg memory in there the other thing that you have to do now is since the floppy drive wants to come with you when you're taking the shielding off is undo the data cable pull out the data cable which can be quite stiff I'm going to bend any pins and then there's the power cable for it as well which in itself can be fun trying to remove 
I'll just drag on the wire, make sure that you, you know, hold the plastic. Which, as I say, can be fun. So you might want to get a screwdriver in there and find a wedge. There we go. Maybe not the best way of doing it, but um, it's definitely the easiest. Just be very careful, don't you know, force it or anything. So that's that done, but then there's tabs or tangs or whatever you want to call them all over the place. So again, you have to slide this whole unit towards yourself. There's some shielding over the power supply units, so be careful, because obviously that's a power supply unit. So pull it towards yourself. And it comes up in a way like this, but then be careful because for you, probably the speaker's still plugged in. I've already disconnected mine because I really just don't need it beeping in my ear just because I've turned the thing on. Because um, it is rather loud and I have all the sound going out through the speakers anyway out the back. So I've disconnected that but you be careful when you're doing it. Since we're here, let's try to fix on the eject button. So there's a bit, basically there's a raised bit. Let's see if I can show you. On focus. Why is it cameras never focus when you're trying to get them to do something? As you can see though, even with the blurriness, there's a raised bit and then it comes across the top here, so slide that down. It seems to be a firm fit. A very firm fit in fact, to the point it doesn't want to fit. That's not very good. Ah, that's not just sliding in. And that'll be because actually where the plastic is, there's no gap for it to slide in. So I'm gonna have to get a sharp knife and a craft knife and file that in. Okay, it sounds a little bit crazy, but after a bit of uh, whittling and getting this down, as you can see, I had two of them. But uh, basically, the bit on the inside needed whittling down a bit. And then to actually make it fit, I've used these and gently squeezed the top of the plastic to get it to the bottom. A bit scary because the last thing I want to do is actually bend the metal to the floppy drive and everything like that. Everything seems to be fine. Stick a disc in. Well, it's actually a, a cleaner disc. Yeah, I just don't want to bend all the metal out of the way. That's what I'm worried about. Put a disc in and just press it gently. There we go. Job done. So, let's get on with changing out the ROMs. Now that's the floppy drive sorted, let's get these chips out. Now I've noticed that the markings on this chip are the same as the markings on this chip, but these ones have a groove all the way down on the left hand side. I can only assume that's to show that pin one is on this side. Like this one has a notch to show that's pin one's uh, that direction. So let's pull these out. Let's notice though that the this is 062 and this is 061. So let's take this one out first. Not to be the matters which order they get taken out, but let's take them out. Try to make sure they come straight up. say six one six two so here's 
061. I don't seem to be having any of the markings to say that they're anything other than those chips. It's nothing to make them any different than the other ones, but hopefully they are. Obviously making sure that the legs are all nicely lined up and going in the right place. get all the keyboard and everything all back in again before we can turn it back on because it will complain if it's not got the keyboard in they seem to be nicely sat there so let's get these chips put back so 061 on the left to make life easier if I have to put them back in again and I've been sent the wrong chips I know for sure that I ordered the correct ones put them over there and I'll mess around putting everything back together again it's easy enough just the reverse of what it was to take it all out actually after a lot of messing around trying to get this to fit I've took the buttons back off again for the drive because it just doesn't line up properly as much as I push the shielding and everything just to make it fit perfectly and it fits perfectly fine but this thing stops it from actually fitting um, I've whittled it and I've tried to line it up and basically with both of them they're both just too far this way so they don't actually fit so that was a waste of money um, what I think I will do is go back to my idea of this and what I'll do is um, print out a flat pit of 3D printed plastic or even find a bit of plastic and carve it out and then hold it in place while the drive is out and everything like that and super glue it together so that the button is exactly where it should be and even then I'll end up with the real button so I'm going to do that in another video at some point. But for now, let's get it all back together again. Keyboard plugged in, make sure operating system 3.11 is working. Okay, I had a little bit of fun with my capture device, but right, let's try to bring this back down again and actually turn the Archimedes on. It's strange and wonderful screens, not seeing anything. I'm getting no signal at all. Don't know why. Well, it seems like it's trying but not getting anywhere so we'll turn it off again press and hold delete and turn it on with that Get a red border floppy drive at least it's given a go since we're booting up now initializing and there we go, we've got it working. Mouse is moving around. Click down here. Go to the info. 3.11. So there we go. It works. Yay. Sorry, a bit of a relief because as I say, I was having problems with my capture device. It was refusing to acknowledge it. It got USB 3, but that's nothing to do with this. So there we go. This is now officially completely pimped out because I'm not going to risk overclocking this because it's one of the it's not the earliest version and it's not the latest version um, this seems to be somewhere sat in the middle and I can add a crystal and all that sort of stuff but I'd have to make a little uh, PCB um, and I just don't want to risk that because this was quite an expensive computer especially now that I've added the extra memory and bought the RISC OS 3.11 so that's it. Everything's great with this and the next time you see this I probably will be trying to get it to go on to a Wi-Fi modem and see if we can get it to go on to some bulletin boards. As always, happy gaming!